Hello everybody and welcome to a new video on this channel. Today I will show you how to perform polynomial regression in GNU Octave. In a previous video I've already shown you how we or how you can fit a straight line to a noisy data set because the dependency between the x variable and the y variable has been linear. It has been a straight line. And this time I will show you how you can um, estimate the coefficients of a polynomial that can fit the data because um, in this case um, here that we will consider now the relationship between x and y is not a straight line this time it will be a non-linear relationship for example a polynomial of order 2 3 4 whatever the cool thing is that the statistical um, estimation problem itself still is linear it's the same statistical problem that we have to solve as we did it in the previous video where we have um, fitted a straight line to our data and this is because the uh, regression function that we are going to use is linear uh, in the parameters that we have to estimate and the parameters are the unknown coefficients of the polynomial so let's directly head over to our workspace and demonstrate it by an example. What we are going to do is we generate a polynomial of an arbitrary order. Then we add noise to it because the noisy data is the case that we have to consider because if we would know the original signal, we don't need to, to do an equal regression. And then we will estimate from this noisy data set the coefficients of the original polynomial. So let's start it by Clearing the workspace variables, closing all maybe open windows and clearing the command uh, window. So first we have to generate a polynomial. Let's say a polynomial of order 3. An arbitrary polynomial. 1, minus 3, 2, 1 for example. And here it's important that you understand that Octave ex expects um, the polynomial, polynomial coefficients in vector p in an order that the highest order coefficient is on the left side so this vector here describes a polynomial that looks like 1 times x to the power of 3 minus 3 times x to the power of 2 plus 2 times uh, x to the power of 1 and plus our offset so the highest order coefficient, the one, is on the left side. Okay, and now we need a vector x where we want to evaluate our polynomial function. So let's say x starts at 0 with an increment of 0 0.01 up to 1, a total of 100 samples. And now we have to evaluate our polynomial at the steps or points defined in x therefore we can use the polyval function which means that we evaluate the polynomial function at all points in x and the polyval function expects two vectors at least the first vector will be our polynomial coefficients again highest order coefficient will be the first entry and the second argument is our uh, vector containing the values where we want to evaluate our polynomial and this will be our original signal. But we need a noisy signal because this um, uh, is the data set that we, that we use in order to estimate the original um, polynomial coefficients from. So to generate the noisy signal, we take our original signal and we add arbitrary additive noise. Um, the noise vector generated by rand n should have the same size as our original signal, y orange. So, and here we have now a noisy data set. This will be our received signal, our sample signal, or whatever. And now from, from this noisy data set, we want to estimate our original polynomial coefficients by using the linear regression. Because even if the dependency is nonlinear, as I uh, already said, the um, statistical estimation problem is linear. So let's first plot the values here. We will use um, uh, three subplots because the first subplot will uh, will show our original signal that we can see oh how should the polynomial look like. 
Then the second subplot will um, uh, show us our noisy data set. So our data set where we have to work or where we, where, where we are going to work on. And the third data set will later on show our um, estimated polynomial and a function. So, and instead of using plot, we use the scatter function. It looks nicer for such um, uh, regression stuff. So we, as we do it, we use it the same way as we use the plot function. We, we scatter x against y original for the first subplot. And we turn on grid minor because the plot looks nicer. And uh, for the second subplot, we use scatter x against y noise. And then let's fire it up to see if we have made any errors. And here's an error, it's a plus instead of a multiplication sign. And then let's fire it up. So, I'm going to show you the result. Yes, I'm new to OBS. Uh, is it? So, here it is. So, here you can see in the first and the upper subplot, you can see our original polynomial function evaluated at our um, points defined by the vector x from zero to one, a nice curve. And in the second, in the um, middle subplot, you can see our noisy data set. And this data set, you see, okay, now a linear or a straight line fitting through this um, cloud of points will make no sense because this is not a linear model that is under uh, this uh, which is that, that's not an underlying linear model and here we are going to use the polynomial regression in order to estimate the polynomial coefficients and hopefully we can restore the original polynomial for sure we will not um, restore it exactly because um, we are um, uh, fitting a polynomial in a least square manner through it, but um, um, we will get close to the original coefficients. So, okay, but how we're we going to do this? First, we have to set up our statistical estimation problem, and therefore we have to generate a matrix. I will call it X. Um, so, and this matrix without going too deep into the math, has a, a specific structure. The first column consists only of ones and exactly the, that amount of ones that um, the length of X is. So X has 100 entries, then we have in the first column 100 ones. So 100 rows filled with the one. The second column then will be our um, vector x in the third column there will be our vector x to the power of two in the fourth column there will be our vector x to the power of three and so on as we have it here in our vector p so we have in the first column once length of x times one then in the second column we have x transposed because it should be a column vector in our third column, we have x transposed because column vector to the power of two. And in our uh, uh, last row uh, uh, column, we have x transposed because column vector to the power of three. Just let's plot x or matrix x that you can see the structure of it. And here it is. And as you can see, the first column only contains ones, which is our offset here. And the second column contains our origin, uh, our vector x. The third column, x to the power of two. And the, the last column, x to the power of four, uh, three. Because we have a polynomial of order three. If we would have a polynomial of order four, meaning that we would have five polynomial coefficients, for sure also this matrix would have five columns and the, the fifth column would then be x to the power of four and so on. So now we have our matrix x and now we can formulate our um, statistical estimation problem. So 
let's call it PS because we want to estimate the, the polynomial coefficients. And I will give you the math for, for this in the description um, below this video. But it's the inverse. We have to uh, calculate the pseudo inverse. We have to calculate the inverse of x transposed times x times x transposed times y noise transposed. Let's fire it up to see if we've made any errors. And it works. So this here is the pseudo inverse in order to solve the statistical estimation problem. Pseudo inverse. More panels, pseudo inverse. I will give you the uh, link to the description in the video uh, below the video. And here it's important in as I already mentioned, P has the order that the highest order coefficient is in the first is the first entry. And for our PS, the highest order coefficient is the last entry. So what we have to do um, is that we flip upside down this column vector so that the um, last element will be the first element and the first element will be the last element and then it's comparable because then it has the same arrangement as our original vector p because then we can also use the polywell function in order to plot for example our estimated sigma so but first let's have a look at the estimated coefficients and ps and uh, for comparison p and as you can see, yes, we are quite close. Let's fire it up an, a second time because then we have generated a new uh, random number or new random numbers. And we see that we are quite close to our original coefficients. So the first coefficient here is, uh, I can also transpose this here that it's maybe much more visible for you. And P. So here it is. The original um, first coefficient was 1 and we have estimated 1.2 and then the second was uh, minus 3, we have minus 3.37. The third was uh, 2, we have estimated 2.16 and the last one has been 1 and we have estimated 0 0.98. Quite close to it. We could get um, more precise if we would use more data, meaning evaluating our polynomial at more points of x, for example, by typing uh, by uh, changing the increment to 0 0.001, generating 1000 samples. And but it works. And uh, just again, because every time we run the script, we generate a new random number vector here. That's why we uh, get all the time a new estimate for our polynomial coefficients. If we want to get the same every run then we would have to reset our random number generator but as we can see it works here in the second one we are still close to our original coefficients so but now let's also um, evaluate this um, polynomial by uh, calling it y s and it's the same we use the polyval function and pass our estimated coefficients to it and our vector x and let's plot also the result here x against y estimate and let's uh, turn on the grid because the plot looks nicer and again uh, that i've um, done here the flip upside down and the transpose is only that our vector ps has the same arrangement of the coefficients as our original vector you don't need it but um, if you want to use the polyval function, it's convenient to order the coefficients in a way that the highest order coefficient has the first entry, as we know. So let's fire the script up. And let's have a look at the result. So I have to choose the plot window here. Okay, here it is. So the first subplot was our original signal here. Then in the middle, our noisy data set and inside this noisy data set, we wanted to fit our polynomial model of order three, meaning that we had to estimate four coefficients. And we estimated the four coefficients using the polynomial regression, linear regression. And as we can see, our estimated polynomial 
is quite close to our original signal. We've verified it by looking at the estimated polynomial coefficients. And that's the magic of the polynomial regression. For sure, you can also use higher order models, polynomials of order five, six, seven, whatever you want. So yeah, this is it. Um, give me a thumbs up and we will see us the next time. Bye bye.